This is nature, a beautiful scenery of grass, plants, and vines acting in harmony. This is not. This enclosure has problems, including hard water stains and a barren setup with nothing but cork bark and dirt. And since Uncle Sam says I can't let my pets go out into nature, I guess I'll just have to bring the nature to them. But before we can do that, we have to start with step one, the eviction. Now these geckos are fast, and I mean very fast. With them being tiny and quick, it definitely presents a problem. Lucky for us, I know how to help make it not one. This is what in the reptile community we refer to as a bin. This bin will help keep the escapees in another confined area if they just so happen to get out. And with a little help of these cups, we shouldn't have any problems. Well, hopefully. Maybe we'll say a quick prayer just in case. And after taking some time to check the cork for any of them that might be on it, the hunt begins. Luckily for us, we end up catching all three without any escaping, leading us into step two, cleaning up. This is a much needed cleaning. The dirt we're just gonna end up dumping, it's useless and it's not pretty. And remember, when doing a bioactive enclosure, it needs to be pretty. After dumping out the bad substrate, we want to get as much dirt off the bottom as possible. Due to putting in a drainage layer, you want the bottom to be as clean as you can for the water reservoir that is going to go in there. Now to deal with the worst part, removing hard water spots from the glass. For this, we're going to use it simply a spray bottle and a razor. This thing was a huge pain in the ass, but it did make some good ASMR content, so please enjoy. I love seeing the difference between the side that has been cleaned versus the other side. It's crazy to see the thing transform into a brand new enclosure. Now, this method was a huge pain in the butt. My palm is swollen about double the size of my other one and it would not stop shaking. Luckily for us, this can finally be done and lead us to finally building this thing out into step number three, the important part. Getting into the drainage layer, I refer to this as the safeguard for the vivarium. To make this layer, I'm using crushed marble, because I'm bougie like that. However, there are many different options you can use. As long as it makes an air pocket that water can get into that is separate from the substrate, then it can be counted as a drainage layer. The reason behind putting a drainage layer is to prevent your soil from becoming oversaturated with water. By being able to drain that water from the soil to this layer, you prevent that gross muddy soil that you can get without using it, and instead you get some nice moist soil. Remember, we want the soil to be moist, not wet. What? What? You don't like the word moist? Oh my, grow up. This isn't 2008 anymore. We're all adults. This is the part of the video where I forgot I don't have any window screen, and instead of being a responsible adult and going out to get some, I instead just stole the screen from the enclosure right next to this, since I'll be redoing that one anyway. This is just going to be a nice separate layer that's going to divide the substrate and the drainage layer from mixing, that way your water is going to stay pure and not full of mud. And remember folks, it's not stealing if you're going to fix it later. Going back to the aforementioned tub, it's time to make our ABC mix, or whatever they call it. For this mix, we are going to be adding topsoil, sand, moss, orchard bark, and charcoal. I don't know how the other guys are activating their charcoal, but apparently I didn't get the cheat code for that, so this one's just regular old charcoal. For the percentage I used, I, I have no idea. What, what do I look like? A nerd? Mix the substrate until it looks good. That's how I live life every day. Eyeball it, and it'll be fine. Uh, probably. And now finally finishing up all the boring yet important part, we can get into chapter four, the fun part. Finally, with all that boring stuff out of the way, we can get into the fun part, actually building the vivarium. After adding our new ACD mix, we begin to build this out by first adding our hardscapes. Usually I would do a background first, but since these geckos are so small, I decided against it. We start with a nice piece of driftwood, and then this really cool like half cork bark tube. I can already imagine these little dudes hanging out inside of it basking in the UV beam. Remember to play around with it a little until you find the one spot where it looks absolutely perfect, because at the end of the day, it's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, I accidentally sawed my finger while making some adjustments to these branches to get them fit, so that's fun. But the build's not done yet, and Mama didn't raise no quitter, so we gotta keep going. After the hardscaping is done, we move on to everyone's favorite part, the plants. For this build, I decided to use a fern, don't ask me which one, some Swiss cheese boy, a plant that someone seemed to drop a paint bucket near, a plant that looks like pothos and might actually be pothos, and then finally a prayer plant. Yeah, that's right, I know that one. 
Now it's time to plant. Remember to always go into a build with a plan. Understand the plants you're using. The ones I'm putting in the back will eventually grow tall and create a kind of background, while the ones I put in front will trail, creating a great visual slope when they are established and begin to grow. This will be much more aesthetically pleasing versus just putting some random plants in and calling it a day. Now with everything planted, this thing is really coming together and looks amazing already. However, we're not done yet. We still have some stuff to do, which is going to bring us to step number five, the extras. Now let's get into the botanicals. For this, I had to cheap out and use some leaves from outside due to blowing the whole budget on the crushed marble we saw earlier. They may not look as good as the fancy leaves you see the pre-packaged, but in the end, they'll do the same job. After a quick miss for the plants, let's just take a second to appreciate how nice this is already looking. I love the depth that these leaves give to this setup, really giving it the forest feel like you would see in nature. Now you're probably asking yourself, Dakota, why did you put those thrift store ass looking leaves inside your pretty vivarium? And the reason is for these guys right here. These are springtails and isopods. The isopods will eat the decaying leaves and other materials, pooping nutrients into the soil for the plants to use, while the springtails will take care of any mold that may appear inside the enclosure, keeping it nice and healthy for both the plants and the animals. Now we're almost finished. After the cleanup crew is in, I start making the final touches using some Spanish moss to give it that rainforest overgrown look. Unfortunately, we had to use some fake ones due to real Spanish moss having some husbandry requirements that just unfortunately wouldn't work in this type of build. And now, after all of our hard work, all we have to do is give this thing one final good miss down for the plants, and then we can get into the final step of this video, putting the morning geckos back in their new bioactive planted vivarium. Even with the enclosure and geckos looking amazing and happy, there's actually one more step I would like to do to finally complete this build. However, the supplies have yet to come, so until then, we'll just have to wait. Two weeks have now passed, and I'm happy to say most of the plants are looking great. The prayer plant in the back is a little rough, but I thought that was going to happen, having a bit more root shock than the rest of the plants. Now let's get into the final supplies of this build. For this, I got two air plants, and my favorite to add to this is going to be some live moss. 
Before we can plant the air plants, I sit for a moment and think where they would best be added. Once that is figured out, I start sowing some moss to use as a connector for the air plants to stick on until they begin to root onto the branch and cork round. With the moss properly soaked, I wring out the excess water and begin to plant. I decided on using the tops of each hardscaped item, one being the branch, the other going to the cork round. Before we can plant, I drive away any geckos so they don't get any wise ideas of giving me a 20 minute chase around the room trying to catch them. Using the moss, I create a cushion that I'm able to stick the air plant in place without it going anywhere. There are probably better ways to do this, and I don't think I'll do this method again, but for now, it works, and it'll keep the air plants in place until the roots grow. The same method is then done for the other plant. I love the little pops of color these give to the top of the build, and definitely think it was worth the wait to add them. Next up, the moss. The idea behind the live moth has always been making a nice moist hide where the animals can retreat and to add depth and life into the hardscapes themselves. I start off with adding some into the cork round and then into the branch. As time goes on, this moss will begin to establish itself and will breathe life into one of the only things in this build that is not living. And at last, Project Jungle's first build is complete. I am very happy with how this turned out, and it has made me even more excited to finish this room with all bioactive vivariums. If you're new here, I definitely think you should subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. And a huge shout out to the Patreon members for helping making this build possible. If you want to help support Project Jungle and everything that goes into these kinds of builds, check out our Patreon, the link will be down there below. However, this is just the beginning, not only in the new builds themselves, but being able to watch this tank grow and evolve with time.